Okay, it's Saturday morning and I found something to share for the next couple of days. It's a, it's a good article and um, I love sharing it. I love reading it's something that I do on my channel. Um, like I said, I'm not much of a teacher, but uh, I do like to share, you know. Anyway, this here is... Um, distinguishing evil from sin now these are actually questions uh, to the concern publishing con concordant publishing concern and answers that they give I believe uh, um, um, so this was a question that was posed to him since God never sins how can he possibly create evil so that's a question that's asked to believers who understand that God does create evil according to Isaiah 45 7 we prove it in the scriptures and in their King James Version I remember years ago and I was uh, still attending uh, some assembly I don't know what it was in Nova Scotia and it was a truth church or something right and I actually went right up to the pastor and because that's when I was coming into a realization of the truth and uh, figuring things out for myself and uh, I figured well I'll share this with the pastor and out of his King James Version I got his Bible and I showed him the passage Isaiah 45 7 that God creates evil and he stood there and he went like blank his face went blank when he saw the actual passage and he was struggling right away with it and then uh, I said, well, can you help me out there? Because I asked him, I said, can you help me out and explain this passage to me? And uh, he says, well, things are just uh, a mystery with God. Some things you just uh, can't even understand or know. And, uh, da, 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 da. and then he goes, hey, Mabel. And then he went over and spoke with an old lady and just ignored me totally. And it was kind of, I was shunned after that because I remember attending the church the next Sundays and stuff and nobody would listen to me I was trying to ask important questions from the scriptures and trying to get some understanding from I thought that that time was uh, people who really understood the scriptures but apparently they didn't understand at all and um, <clears throat> that was my beginning part of my journey when I was actually uh, first became a believer so uh, it was very hard to get a straight answer from uh, from pastors and clergymen of the church eventually I just left that church because I didn't feel welcome at all period <clears throat> so and of course that's when I went back to church for after my stay in a mental institution for three months I went back to church and uh, that just wasn't cutting it and then I ended up you know my journey a little bit and I explained it before um, <clears throat> I ended up just uh, crying out to God, saying, well, if you're real, show me who you are. And uh, he brought me this homeless guy. And this homeless guy gave me the Concordia Persian. So I was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. And that's actually when I started studying the scriptures for real in the sense of what it really was and how it was really translated properly. So... It's an amazing journey. Each one of us has an amazing story, and I appreciate it so much. Um, I've watched a few testimonies on videos, and it's just, like, amazing. It almost sounds carbon copy. Some of them do, like, of where we came from through the actual institution. Um, <clears throat> so it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. And when we do get together, we understand this because we have the same spirit within us. So we're able to share this and get a real understanding of what each one of us has gone through. Um, fellowship is so important. I watched uh, ACO yesterday and Norm explained a little bit about the scriptures in a proper context in the sense that they are scrolls. They're not books. And I got that right away because, yeah, yeah, so how can they be books? They are scrolls. And it's just so interesting. <clears throat> I'm not going to give it away here. You know, he's coming on on Sunday, so I don't want to give away in too much. But, yeah, it was a really good show. Very, uh, very mature fellowship. So I appreciated it so much. 
Anyway, let's get at this little article here. I don't mind chatting and going on. I feel like I go on sometimes, but that's okay. All right. Distinguishing evil from sin. So this was the question, since God never sins, how can he possibly create evil? When we say that God creates evil, we are simply quoting from the word of God, Isaiah 45, 7, and that too from the authorized version. Amazing, yeah. You show them the authorized version and they're just like, boom, what? It can't say that. That's pastors and people that think they know something when they don't. Nevertheless, the statement has been termed nothing less than a shocking blasphemy, according to them. To substantiate this charge, the phrase has been changed, and we are represented as having said that God is the author of sin. <clears throat> exactly. This leads us to restate, with all the emphasis possible, and most important but much neglected principle, when God uses two distinct terms, he has two distinct meanings. God has never said that he created sin, so we too refrain from doing so. Sin is lawlessness. 1 John 3, 4. As God is the lawgiver, he is not under any law, but is above his own enactments. When he does, that which would be sin in man, it is no longer sin. He kills. Deuteronomy 32, 39. If we should do this, it would be a grievous sin. If the state does it, it is law lawful. So capital punishment, that's lawful. It's part of the law. When God does it, it's far removed from sin. From this, we can see that God is not man, and we must not be judged by human standards. And he and must not be judged by human standards. Sin, as we have said, is lawlessness. Its most graphic definition in the Hebrew is found in Judges 2016, where 700 left-handed men could sling stones at a hair, hair breadth and not miss or sin, for it is the same word. God never misses the mark. He never sins. We may illustrate this by the most flagrant sin which man has ever committed, the murder of the Son of God. We know that they killed the inaugurator of life, Acts 3.15, with lawless hands, Acts 2.23. Yet he was smitten, smitten of God. Yahweh desired to crush him and cause him to be wounded, Isaiah 53, 4, 10, 4 and 10. They were, they were but carrying out what God's hand and counsel designated beforehand to occur, Acts 4.28. The very act of God, which puts away sin, was man's most grievous sin. The act was the same, but the actors were different in rank and motive and object. What God does is right because he is God and because his motives are divine and his object blessing. The murder of God's son, apart from his resurrection, would have been the greatest calamity in the universe. But unlike man, God was able not only to kill, but to make alive again. <clears throat> okay, so we'll continue with this article tomorrow. Grace and peace. Have a wonderful Saturday.